Hi everyone, I'm John Tarilla, one of the authors of Topology, a Categorical Approach. In this video, I'm going to talk a little bit about what topology is. Geometry and topology are the branches of mathematics that study spaces. Geometry is quantitative. It involves things like uh, angles and lengths, areas, volumes, curvature. Topology is a more qualitative study of space and concerns concepts like connectedness and dimension. Now, before I get into uh, some things that are specific to topology, let me say some things that are general. Often in mathematics, uh, we're interested in objects, say X, Y, and Z, and relationships between the objects uh, called morphisms, and we denote those with arrows. In algebra, we study objects like groups, and the morphisms between them are group homomorphisms. In linear algebra, we're interested in vector spaces, and the morphisms are linear maps between them. Uh, in topology, the objects are topological spaces, and the morphisms between them are continuous functions. With this general perspective in mind, you can picture objects as dots and a morphism from one object to another as an arrow. This picture emphasizes the morphisms, and there's a good reason to emphasize morphisms. Everything about a particular object, a particular mathematical object, is encoded in the relationships it has with other objects. This sort of big picture theme is especially prominent in topology. Now, if we're going to focus on morphisms, we should know a little bit about them. The first thing to know is that they're composable. And the second thing to know is that there are identity morphisms. Whenever, there's a, whenever you have a compositional structure for which there are identities, you can define what it means to be invertible. So uh, in this case, a morphism from x to y is invertible if there exists a morphism g from y to x so that the compositions g followed by f is the identity on x, and f followed by g is the identity on y. Now, invertible morphisms get a special name. They're called isomorphisms. And this resolves an important question. When are two objects considered the same? <laughs> Let's look at a situation you're probably familiar with. In plane geometry, these two triangles are considered the, the same. Sometimes people call that congruent. Um, and why are they considered the same? Because there's a rigid motion of the plane that takes one to the other. In this case, I actually copy and pasted one and rotated it a little. Um, but the idea here is that there's some set of transformations. We specify a set of maps here, rigid motions of the plane, and we declare objects to be the same if they're related by one of these maps. More generally, we say objects are isomorphic if and only if there exists an isomorphism taking one to the other. It's a tradition to use an equal sign with a tilde over it uh, to denote objects that are isomorphic or when a morphism is an isomorphism. Now, back to topology. In topology, the objects are topological spaces, or just spaces for short. The morphisms are continuous functions, and the isomorphisms are called homeomorphisms. So a homeomorphism is a continuous function that has a continuous inverse. Um, be aware that there's no logical necessity to give uh, the isomorphisms between topological spaces a special name, but it is traditional. In topology, we're concerned with properties that are preserved under homeomorphisms. After all, we consider two objects uh, two spaces the same if there's a homeomorphism between them. So the only properties that topology can see are those preserved by homeomorphism. And, and we give them a name. So a property is called a topological property if it's preserved by homeomorphisms. That is, if a space X has, has the property and Y is isomorphic to X, then Y has the property. For example, being connected is a topological property. Here I've drawn a space that is not connected. Um, it can be separated by two disjoint open sets. Um, 
For a non-example, a subset of the plane being a triangle is not a topological property. The reason is that there exist homeomorphisms from the plane to itself that map triangles to non-triangles, like circles, for example. Being orange isn't a topological property either. In other words, if I, uh, if I can draw a space uh, using the color orange, um, you know, the color orange itself isn't part of the topology of the space. Um, this might seem obvious, but we often describe topological spaces uh, in ways that are not topological. Uh, I mean, to see what I mean, being bounded or unbounded is not a topological property. Um, you might picture real Euclidean space, Rn, as a big, unbounded set of points centered at an origin. You know, any picture you might sketch of Rn, you might think, contains only a small, finite portion of it, since infinitely much of it will be missing from any picture. But this picture of Rn is not a topological one. The unboundedness of Rn, or the origin being a special center point, these are not topological notions. To see that boundedness isn't topological, consider the punctured unit disk, which is bounded. Um, this space is homeomorphic to the set of points in the plane whose distance from the origin is greater than or equal to one. Uh, that's an unbounded set. Um, the map Z maps to one over Z, um, here I'm identifying R2 with the complex numbers, uh, is a continuous function and it's invertible, it's its own inverse. And that shows that you can have a homeomorphism between a bounded space and an unbounded space. Okay, now we've seen um, some examples and non-examples of topological properties. Um, how can we study topological properties systematically? Well, one great way is to use functors. A functor, call it capital F, from a category C to a category D, sends objects and morphisms in C to objects and morphisms in D. Uh, so if X and Y are objects of C, you have objects Fx and Fy in the category D. And if you have a morphism from X to Y, um, it gets assigned to a morphism from Fx to Fy. You can economically summarize this as sending morphisms to morphisms as pictured. Now, a functor satisfies some axioms. Uh, it sends morphisms to morphisms in a way that respects composition and identities, which implies that functors send isomorphisms to isomorphisms. Therefore, every functor from the category of topological spaces to another category defines a topological property. Algebraic topology concerns functors from the category of topological spaces to algebraic categories. Um, homology is a functor into graded abelian groups. Uh, the fundamental group is a functor from pointed topological spaces to groups. Uh, cohomology is a functor into the category of modules over a ring R, um, reverses arrows. K-theory is a functor from spaces to commutative rings. It also reverses arrows. Uh, and that's all for this video. Thank you very much. The end.